So actually, when someone when someone is a boxer, right? If I if if I get inside his hands, right? Like say I'm here already, I don't have the ability to use shout endo from a hook, right? So what I want to do is when this punch is coming, say it's a short hook, is I want to catch his arm there and then land so. In other words, I'm too far. I can't get to safe distance, which would be here. You know, if I could stay in safe distance, I could start to try to set up my own chances to hit in Wing Chun, but because I'm already here, maybe I just ended up here, maybe I didn't react fast enough, so I'm in a close distance. If I'm in a far distance, like for example in Shun I just, for example, I might kick. You know, I might kick here because I have a far distance. But sometimes he comes in and I'm inside his arms, punch, and I end up here. Now at this position, when I end up here, if I should not want to land south, this creates a bridge that I can start to hit with, right? If this is the first hand, the leading hand punch, uh, throw this hand, for example. So, if he throws this hand, right, I don't know what hand he's going to throw. If I catch, he's still going to throw. Nobody's that slow. Come on! Nobody will wait! Ah. So, if you get a position where you've already got a bridge, and that hand comes, and you can't move, move to safe distance in time, like a tan. Like he comes in and punches, come in and punch. I cannot get this tan in time, right? What I want to do, if I can, right, is transfer to a lab. Now I can bar him here like this and start punching, right? And he's still going to punch there, right? So this is not like I'm going to stay here. I mean, bam, bam. You know, I got to hit him very hard in those two at that point. But this is not what I'm, oh, I'm locking up here. This has got to be able to adjust. Because there's no way that I think that I can, I can deal. What I can do when I'm in a position like this is he throws a punch here, I can catch it with two hands. If I can catch it with two hands, I can start to land some. Because I can't get back to a safe, position, safe distance. Right? I'm just too close to this person. So safety-wise, that's why I want, I want to land some. Now, if I'm on this, if I get a jump cell this side, he throws that punch. There, now I can throw a land cell turning and hitting. I may be able to walk and turn and hit. Walk and turn and hit. And keeping a horse so that I can have uh, follow-up strikes or kicks from different positions. Basically, keeping a horse gives you all those options. Don't, don't flare out your elbow. That gives big holes here. Your elbows go up, bam, someone hits you. You can't flare your elbows up. That's, boom, right? Someone will come in and hit you right when this low gate opens up. So don't flare your elbows up like that. People do that like they, people do this, right? For example, quite a boxing counter is they do this a lot. Come back here. People block a punch to the head like, like this and they cover their head, right? Right, so, right, this is, this is death. Someone blocks a punch like this, right? You can't really stop a shotgun. So this chopping hand, I don't care how, how much he does that, like, this is taught in MMA a lot, right? Pam, home, shotgun, done. So it doesn't really work. They think it works, but it doesn't it's because they're used to people punching this way. But this is a this is a chopping strike to that area, which goes right through to the brain. Oh, now, now you went to you. And so you you when you when you not to mention this is all open. I mean, you're just hitting the bottom right away. Why would you? Why go there? I'm not trying to hit your head. This is a huge target here. Uh, stop it again. So if